happening YouTube, Facebook, and people around the world. Ah, oh, I thought it was sunny. Never mind. Here's what's coming up in this episode of the Hoof GP. Kev and I have a disagreement. This cow is a little shaky, and this hoof is seriously painful. Craigie boy is on holidays in South France, uh, so hopefully, Craig, you're having an amazing time. I'm sure you are. I've already spoken to you, and you sound like you are. Uh, so it's just me and Kev today. Uh, you guys may have seen that Steve had some serious uh, complications. It was horrible. He he ended up having spinal surgery. I'll talk about that later on and show you exactly what ha what happened. But Kev's having to put the pick up back together because his little sister borrowed it the other day. That was Nicole's fault, not me. Oh, Blaming me for a second, so it was. Um, yeah, the good thing about having pickups and cars and stuff like this is any family that their car breaks down or if they need to move something, they borrow a pickup or they borrow a car or whatever. So that is a really good thing. Anyway, we need to get set up and get to the first farm. Hopefully today's not a long one. So Kevin, as a result of his spinal surgery, has still got some issues, ongoing issues. So he is away back to the hospital today. But as I said, uh, Craig Boy is in southern France. So Kev's gonna ring his car today. We're gonna do the first farm together. Then he'll help me set up the second farm and then he'll lead me to it. And I shall do the cows on my own, which is fine, because that's what I used to do all the time. Right, let's head. driving along the road, I don't know if you could make out the crush there. Here in South West Scotland, all the hoof trimmers are friendly. I get on with them all, they're all, they're all good guys, we're all trying to achieve the same thing. Not sure if that's the same all over the world, but it definitely is here in South West Scotland, and uh, I like it. It's a good, small community. I've actually spilled my coffee all over the seat, something which I'm sure Kevin will be really happy about when he gets in. <laughs> no, I did not urinate on the seat, Kevin, but thank you for asking. It's incredible what my family will do to get in the, in the videos. Kevin here is obviously my brother-in-law. And his little sister, my sister-in-law, is behind us right now because she's obviously wanting in the video, isn't she? <sighs> Nicole, you can just ask. Genuinely, where we live in Southwest Scotland, we've, uh, we're only driving a couple of miles, we've already had to wave at a good few people and sister-in-law's just passed us. It's a real community around, around here, which sometimes is fantastic and other times is maybe not quite so fantastic, but yeah, it's good. We go to some farms that are just completely unorganized and uh, yeah, they're just... Flat out. <laughs> he wishes he was flat out I in his bed. Out bed. <laughs> One thing I absolutely love about living here in Southwest Scotland is all of the characters you come into contact with. And working as a hoof trimmer, you meet probably more than most professions. First little batch of cows done. But they just keep coming and coming. On farms like this, we work with small batches of cows. We put them away after we've done them and move on to the next batch. It's really important for us that these cows do not hang around for too long because cows standing still on concrete is a very bad thing for their feet. When a cow stands still, she transfers the vast majority of her weight to the inner or medial claw on her hind feet. 
The claw starts to split apart and we end up with soul fractures and very lame cows, which is the exact opposite of what we're here to achieve. Now my wheel's in motion and my window's open Clearly the footage you're watching right now has been vastly sped up, but we are working at a very fast pace and this is why. The feet on farms like these are actually very, very good indeed. This is your average trim. This is a demonstration of the Dutch method of foot trimming. The five step method originally thought about, come about, written down by Raven Tucson back in the 1950s. The hoof I'm trimming right now represents what we see around 90% of the time. Barely anything needs done. In accordance with the Dutch 5 step method, we correct the toe length, meaning we shorten the toes to where they should be. These cow's hooves should be around 75 to 80 millimeters long down the frontal wall. Once we've done that, we balance both of the soles of the feet, meaning that 50% of our weight will be on the inner claw and 50% on the outside claw. They need to be flat and level with no undulations. Then we move on to this step, modeling out. That's to alleviate the typical sole ulcer site where most of cow's problems occur. Once the modeling out or step three is complete, we move on to step number four, dealing with any problems. If there were problems with this cow's hoof, we would take the weight away from that area and direct it towards the good part of the hoof sometimes by using a block. The fifth and final step is to remove any excess hoof horn from around the heels. And that is how you do the perfect Dutch style routine trim. Time for coffee. I've just realized an issue. We couldn't think why Craig actually works here and we've just realized there's nobody to make the coffee. I'm not doing it. You do it? Best of three, okay? Oh. 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 Shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoe. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, shoe. Oh well. There you go. Oh well. A deal's a deal. And whilst I make the coffee, I might as well tell you about Stevie Boy. So, this is a video of Steve about a week ago. As you can see, he was falling over. He basically, he first jumped up on me, squealed, and we didn't know why, but he sounded a little bit like a cat. Me. People can see you making the coffee in the background. So anyway, then the next day, this was him outside. As you can see, he started falling over, trying to walk backwards, couldn't lift his legs, his back end kept going. He was struggling to even sit or do the toilet. And by the following day, I don't have a video, but he literally couldn't even stand up. So people think that we do a good job looking after these cows' feet, and I've no doubt that we do, and I enjoy it, and I enjoy the improvement we can bring to these cows' lives by doing that. But what the veterinary hospital did for us was nothing short of amazing. We took Stevie Boy down to the local vets, who we were really friendly with anyway. They scanned him over, then immediately decided he needed to go for a three hour drive up to Stirling, where they did an MRI scan on him. And that MRI scan showed that he had severe compressions in his spine. So his spinal cord was actually being twisted and contorted by the bones inside this is an image from an MRI scan and if you look at this part here you can see that's his spinal cord and that is it being pinched by the vertebrae below. These vertebrae here are supposed to be completely oval but as you can see they are not. That black shape you can see pushing into them and distorting the shape is actually the vertebrae below it. So Steve went for surgery an hour and a half after he had that MRI scan and by the next morning he could walk again, which is an absolute miracle. And I need to say thank you to you guys on YouTube because if this had been a couple of years ago, then, well, the obvious thing is Steve wouldn't be here anymore because we wouldn't have been able to afford to send him for the surgery he did. So I need to say a massive thank you to Broadley's veterinary surgeons. They were absolutely incredible. Steve still has a long way to go. He's in this little cage here. But as you can see, he's full of life, um, but he's not allowed out of his bed for the next six, well, two weeks, and then he's only allowed very, very small spurts of uh, 
of energy and exercise. So yeah, thank you YouTube for making sure that Steve's been kept with us. Anyway, that's me made the coffee. Time to drink it. Oh, I've made a <laughs> job of that. Yeah, so Kev's obviously walking much better, but he's still got some problems and complications from, would you say it's from your back or is it a separate thing? Chris can think it's lower down. Thinks it's lower down. Oh well, Ke that's why Kev's away at the hospital today. Hopefully he's all right. He's not got a very nice procedure to happen. You want to go? <laughs> no, all right. So if you guys watched the live the other day, you'll know that I'm going to Denmark uh, this coming October. And so are the guys, so the whole of Team Hoof GP, including Mrs. HGP, are going to a huge conference center in Billund to uh, to talk. Well, it's only me talking, but uh, the rest will probably be there drinking yeah. beverages of sorts, I would imagine. Then I'm in Florida next year. In February, a conference in Orlando, which I'm super, super looking forward to. And there might be a couple of things happening in between all of that. Um, yeah, exciting things. Also, if you didn't catch the live, there is a, a huge thing that I've been working on for the last few months. That is a uh, few months, I say, it's been a long time actually. We've been developing it with another company and it's gonna really, really help uh, the lives of hoof trimmers, vets, farmers, dairymen, anybody who is working with cow's feet. This is something that will really, really help. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's something I've wanted to do pretty much since I started. Poop time in, so I'm really glad that it's coming to fruition. Anyway, we're gonna drink this coffee quickly and get back to the job in hand. Right, let's get back to it. Throughout these cows, there are small problems that we overcome with many of the feet. They are very small and insignificant right now, but intervening at this stage means that the cow will never become lame, rather than become a lame cow that we have to fix. And just like that, that is all of the routine trims done, but this farm does have one cow in the hospital pen, meaning that she has had a serious episode of lameness. They've already treated her with antibiotics and anti-inflammatories. I did well there. Um, so yeah. Let's get her in the crush and see what we can do to help. I really like this farm. I've been coming here for years and it's definitely one of my favorites. And they go. Just look at how happy they all are. Apart from this one, which is why she's in the hospital pen. She's so keen to get there, I can't actually video her walking. What's she lame on? What fit she lame on? Fat left. Uh, Kevin and I aren't certain what foot she's actually lame on. It's difficult to tell straight away, and especially because she's on the straw, we can't see any deviations as soon as we bring as soon as we lifted our foot up. Let's give it a bit of a wash. Because I'm not exactly sure what's wrong or where it's wrong or which foot it is, we'll just continue as normal and do a routine style, routine Dutch style hoof trim. And hopefully something transpires. This spot here looks pretty suspect to me. Yep, on closer inspection, we can see this spot here will almost certainly track all the way up inside our hoof and it bursts out right here. Can you guys see that? If we zoom right in, there's a crack right around our heel. The status of the cow's feet within a farm, i.e. the hoof health condition of the whole herd of cows, is very rarely down to the hoof trimmer alone. And this is a very, very good demonstration of that. Without the early intervention of the guys who milk these cows, this cow would still be in very great pain. As you saw when she came into the crush, both Kevin and I, seasoned hoof trimmers, were unsure of which foot she was lame on. And that is because they had already administered pain relieving drugs and antibiotics, making our job all that much easier. Although that being said, this hoof trim 
is taking a turn for the worse. Although there isn't a dramatical fountain of pus or an explosion of fluid from within this hoof, make no mistake, this is relieving great pressure from this cow's hoof. Taking away these top layers of hoof horn means that no dirt and debris or any buildup of fluid can happen. Although very slight, there has already been this incident within the hoof capsule itself and that's what you can see right now. We can see her corium being exposed here but it was already detached from the hoof horn that I'm stripping away with my knife. Without action on a hoof like this, all that's going to happen is it's going to get worse and worse and worse to the point where a cow like this would not be able to walk. Her foot would become severely inflamed and because of that she would stop using it so much which would mean the blood flow would reduce vastly, again adding to the cycle of inflammation and serious pain. The long and short of it is that without human intervention on a cow like this she would just get worse and worse and she simply wouldn't get any better. We shorten the problematic claw as much as we possibly can, get some glue on that outer claw and get a TP block in place, then continue with what we can of the trim. There is still a lot of detached and loose hoof horn that needs to come away. If it doesn't get removed, all it's doing is acting as a trap for dirt, manure and infection to collect. And just like that, we come to the end of this little cow's trim. We've done everything we could by removing all of this overburdening hoof horn, which looks fairly extreme, but is absolutely necessary. All we need to do now is check over this back right foot, because at first we weren't sure which foot had the problem. Sometimes that can point to both feet having a problem. Imagine if you were sore on both of your feet. You wouldn't favour one over the other, and obviously cows are exactly the same, leading for some confusion for us as hoof trimmers, as neither one foot is sorer than the other. As you can see, there is no problem with this back right foot, and in case you're wondering, this is definitely not an issue. So it turned out the problem was in fact pretty obvious in the end. This is a white line ulcer. So it's an ulcer that's happened right inside the white line and they can be they can be particularly nasty because they can become infected, which is what happened to this cow. But because the dairymen have been so vigilant and so good at treating her, it's subsided by the time we've actually come to trim her. I've got something in my eye. Yep, I've still got something in my eye. Anyway, because they treated her so quickly and put her in that hospital bed and now we've trimmed her, this cow will be healed in this one simple trim. Best case scenario, early detection, early intervention is the absolute key. So that's her, well and truly on the mend, but she is going back to her hospital pen because any cow that has had drugs like her needs to be kept, sorry, her milk needs to be kept out of the tank. And she's obviously not fully healed yet, but in her hospital pen, she will. Although it turns out she doesn't want to go back in her hospital pen. Come on. And just like that, that is the end of this episode of the Hoof GP. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.